All right, today's lesson is all about concentration and molarity. Let's stop and think for a second. When you make Kool-Aid or lemonade, there are a set of directions on the package. You're supposed to take two quarts of uh, water, a cup of sugar, and one packet of the Kool-Aid flavor mix. But what exactly is the concentration of the Kool-Aid? You know by taste whether you have an unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated solution in terms of how much sugar you add, but scientists have a way of measuring concentration of solutions, and they do this by something called molarity. Molarity is the concentration of a solution expressed as moles of the solute per liter of the solution. The units are moles per liter, or we can call it molar with a capital M. You have seen the capital M several times throughout the year with a number attached to it on various bottles that you've used in the laboratory. Molarity is also an equation. Capital M, molarity, is equal to moles over liters. So while the moles per liter and the molar are both the units, it's also an equation that we can use. And if we set molarity over 1, and we set it equal to moles over liters, now we have a proportion. You'll sometimes see it in a triangle as well, but I know we prefer proportions. So how do we calculate molarity? You first have to make sure that your solute, the, uh, the chemical that you're dissolving, is converted into moles. So we measure in grams in the lab, we have to convert that gram value into moles. Then we have to make sure that our solution volume is in liters, not milliliters, so we'll have to do that conversion as well. And if you recall, there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Put a 1 under the capital M for molarity and solve it as a proportion like we just talked about. Please take a moment and copy down this example problem in your notebook. Okay, so here's a typical molarity problem. We are asked what the molarity of a potassium nitrate solution is that has a volume of 400 milliliters, and we know we measured out 85.0 grams of the potassium nitrate. Remember our rules. We have to first convert the mass of the solute into moles. So when we do this, we have to first get the formula for potassium nitrate. Just as a quick review, because potassium is in group 1, it gets a plus 1 charge. So K plus nitrate, the A-T-E ending, if you recall, had, means that you have a polyatomic ion. And when you look it up on your purple sheet, it's negative 1. So potassium nitrate, when you crisscross, is KNO3. When we look up the molar mass of KNO3, just for review, we add up the mass of one potassium, one nitrogen, and three oxygens. All right, so let's convert the 85 grams to moles. We have 85.0 grams of KNO3. And when we add up all the masses of the elements in the compound, we get a molar mass of 101.11 grams of KNO3 to one mole of KNO3. Remember, molar mass is the mass of one mole of any substance. So anytime you look the values up on the periodic table, that's equal to one mole. When we do the math here, we get an answer on the calculator of 0 0.8406685 blah blah blah. We're allowed to keep three sig figs, so we're going to report 0.841 moles of KNO3, potassium nitrate. Now our second step is to convert the milliliters of the solution to liters because in order to be in molarity you have to be in moles per liter. This particular problem we were given milliliters so we have to do a quick conversion. We have 400.0 milliliters of solution and we know that there are 1,000 milliliters to 1 liter so we have 0 0.4000 liters of solution. Our last step is to calculate molarity and remember it's an equation. Molarity is equal to the moles divided by the liters.
Now we don't have to create it as a proportion this time because we literally want molarity. We want the capital M this time. So we're going to take our moles, 0 0.841 moles of KNO3, and we're going to divide it by our 0 0.4000 liters. Let me shrink this all down a little bit. I need some room. And when we do that math, keeping our three sig figs, our answer that we report is 2.10 molar KNO3. Now, what if we have to solve for the moles or grams or liters? That's when we put the M, capital M, over 1. Please take a moment and copy down this example. This is the most real life example I can give you. Scientists typically know what kind of solution they want, what concentration, and how much of it they need to make. So what they need to really use the molarity equation for is to figure out how much of their solute they need to weigh out. So here is a typical example. If you recall our aluminum and cupric chloride reaction where we made copper for stoichiometry, here's a way to figure out how much cupric chloride we needed to make to make the pretty blue solution. Let's say you need to make 500 milliliters of a 0.5 molar solution of cupric chloride. How many grams of cupric chloride must be added to the solution? So we know that our equation is molarity is equal to moles over liters. They gave us the molarity, 0 0.5, um, and we can rewrite that as moles per one liter so that now we can have a um, proportion. But we don't know the moles over here. We don't know how many moles of the cupric chloride that we need. We do know how much of it we need to make. We need to make uh, 500 milliliters, but we need to quick convert 500 milliliters to liters, a thousand milliliters to one liter gives us 0.5 liters. Oh, we have to make this a little bit smaller, sorry guys. So we end up putting the 0 0.5 right here for our liters that we need. And then we cross multiply and divide. So our moles of cupric chloride that we need is equal to 0.25. Okay? However, we can't measure out moles in the lab. So now we need to convert the 0.25 moles of cupric chloride to grams. When we add up our copper and our two chlorines, our molar mass is, hang on a second, 134.4 grams of cupric chloride. So when we run our calculation, we find that we need to weigh out 33.6 grams of cupric chloride in the lab and then add it to our solution in order to make 500 milliliters of a 0.5 molar solution of cupric chloride. So how does a scientist prepare a solution for the laboratory? Every time you've come into lab, the solutions have already been made for you. So how are we making them behind the scenes? First, we use something new. We use something that we call a volumetric flask. That's a new piece of laboratory equipment for you. You don't need to handle it at this level, but someday in college you may need to make up your own solution. So the first thing you do is place a little solvent into your volumetric flask. In this diagram, they're using ethanol. Most likely you would be using water, distilled water at that. Then you add the measured amount of your solute. So however many grams, let's say we were making that 2.10 molar potassium nitrate from our example problem, you would then add your 85 grams of potassium nitrate into that flask. You swirl it around a little bit until the majority of uh, the potassium nitrate has been dissolved. And then you fill the solvent to the line. It's kind of hard to see here, but there is a mark right here. Actually, let me see if I can... 
volumetric flasks have a line on them. They only have one line. It's not like a graduated cylinder. These flasks are measured out for only one specific volume. So you have to fill the volumetric flask all the way up to what we call the mark. That's where the bottom of the meniscus will be on that particular line. If you go over, you have to dump the whole thing out and start all over again. If you're under, you can add a little bit more water. You then invert several times in order to make sure that the solution is completely dissolved and mixed.